Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Srinivas, uh, and I'm working as a practice manager for Millware Technologies for Royal Cyber. Uh, so, uh, as per the agenda, we are just giving the brief introduction about WebSphere MQ. And WebSphere MQ is the IBM Middle Printer product, and it is the IBM WebSphere message queuing. And the WebSphere MQ is used to transmit the messages from one application to another application. If you are transmitting the messages from one application to another application, you can use the simple MQ API calls you can configure on your application so that that applications can connect to WebSphere MQ and they can put the messages on the queue and they can get the messages. And there is no constraint like how many applications can connect to a queue because there can be any number of applications can connect to one queue and any number of applications can connect and can receive the messages from the queue. And there is no constraints on the application structure and MQ can be installed on any OS operating system like Windows. Unix platforms like Linux, Sun Solaris, AX, and on mainframes as well. And there are different types of uh, MQ queues, like we have local queues, alias, remote queues, and model queues. Suppose let's say if you have like two applications hosting on a same a server where MQ is installed, you can connect to the local queue where one application puts the message on the queue, and another application picks the message from the queue. And we have one more queue called alias queue where you don't want to expose your queue names to the sending or the receiver application. Suppose let's say you're uh, getting in from an application A and your application B is receiving the messages and your application B don't want to expose that application queue name to application A. Then we can create an alias queue where your application A will connect and put the messages and application will B will receive it. As well, we have a remote queue where suppose, let's say if you want to transmit the messages from one queue manager to other queue manager, you can easily put the message in the remote queue uh, and the remote queue will automatically will put the message on transmit queue and it will be transmitted to the next one. In the same way we have like a model queue and it, it can be a temporary dynamic or a permanent dynamic. Suppose let's say if you are sending a messages to the another application and you have to get an acknowledgement from the application, so you can use this temporary and permanent dynamic. Uh, the best example I, could, I can say here, like uh, uh, we can use MQ on a DB2 because DB2 comes with its own listener. Suppose let's say where you have a requirement where you have to uh, connect your applications to put or to insert or to uh, update the database. Uh, in between, you can have an MQ in place so that your application can put the messages on the DB2 MQ. And the DB2 listeners can be configured very easily because IBM has given an inbuilt DB2 listeners where you have to just configure the queue, menu, the queue name there so that once you uh, connect your DB2 listeners to an MQ, the DB2 listeners pick the messages and it will suppose if the DB2 listeners have to call the any stored procedure in DB2, it will call the stored procedure and it will do the insertion update, like whatever you want to do in DB2. So what is the advantage of using this is, suppose let's say your application is doing a direct insertion into the database. Sometimes if the database is down, your application services will start working. So if you have an MQ in between, if the database is down as well, what it can do is the messages can sit on the queue. So as soon as the database is up, the MQ listener can uh, start and it can pick the messages from the queue. So the clustering, uh, I think this is the one benefit that most of the customers uh, or most of the uh, MQ architectures will use in their infrastructure. Suppose, let's say if you want to do some load balancing uh, between your middle mission critical applications, uh, if you don't, if you want your services to be running 24 by 7, then we can have an MQ clustering in place where you can load balance your queues between the queue managers. So that what happens is whenever uh, the one queue manager goes down, if there's a, the queue managers are in cluster, and the queue is part of the cluster, then automatically, if you make that queues as a part of load balancing of the cluster, automatically the, the one which is active will pick up the messages and it will process the messages to the application. So there won't be any downtime to your services. Automatically, all the messages will be picked up by the active ones and it will process it. 
So this is the purpose of clustering, like simplified administration. Suppose if you want to have, if you want to uh, share, uh, or if you want to have messages from uh, multiple queue managers into one queue manager, so you don't need to define like too many remote queue definitions, too many transmission queue. You can simply uh, collaborate all these queue managers into a simple or in one cluster, and you can easily share the uh, messages across your platforms. And uh, other, I mean, I think this is the other one which uh, IBM has introduced as Perbin Swap. Suppose, let's say, if you want to uh, publish your messages to all your subscribers who are subscribed to the topic string, automatically they can publish to the topic string. So whoever subscribed to that will get the messages. Uh, so we have in, uh, actually uh, implemented this problem so to one of our uh, customers where they have like four brokers uh, running on uh, Linux servers, and we have like four queue managers are configured on the four brokers. So uh, these four brokers are connected to a database. So whenever there is a database entry or whenever, whenever there is a database change, uh, it will uh, the one request will come to one broker where it will refresh its global cache. At the same time, it has to notify the other queue managers, and the other brokers to refresh their cache. So what we have done there is uh, we have added all the four queue managers into the cluster and we made the local queue as a part of the cluster for the four queue managers, and we have created the publications, and we have created the topic strings, and we have created the subscription for all the four queue managers. So as soon as one queue manager receives a message, it will refresh its cache, and it will notify or it will put the message on the topic string so that the other queue managers will get the messages, and they will refresh the cache. So this is the very good. Uh, future that IBM uh, Westfield MQ where you can send the messages to multiple queue managers at one shot. So I'm going to talk about the MQ migration and as you all know that IBM has stopped its services the end of support for IBM Westfield MQ 7.0.1 and Westfield MQ v7.0.0. So most of our clients are moving to the latest version from the 7 to 8 or even uh, 8, 8.0.0.5. So what we are doing here is uh, whenever we are doing the migration for the, the customers, what we'll do is we'll first examine their existing infrastructure and we will see like how best we can do the migration because it's a migration we, we, we are not considering is a one-time migration and we are actually uh, providing the scripts for migrating their infrastructure for the uh, from the uh, from the old version to the latest version so what we are doing is we are we are providing the scripts from them so the script what the script will do is the prerequisite script will take the backup of the whole queue manager the save queue manager and it will take the backup of the authorizations and after that it will take the backup of the file system Suppose let's say during the migration, if the file systems get corrupted and if you want to uh, restore those file systems, because anyhow the storage team normally will do that the backup for every one week or 10 days. But as the part of the migration procedure, we are taking the file systems backup and we are storing it some shared directory or in some local directory where we can retrieve the file systems whenever we require to uh, or whenever we require to uh, go to the previous version and or whenever we require uh, if any any corruption happened during that migration we can revert back that so as a part of installation steps so uh, i mean the installation script what it will do is it will stop all the queue managers on the server and we, we have an mql check and i'm going to show uh, during the mq automation demo uh, so uh, what uh, the script will do is uh, we, it will do the MQL check. So it will make sure that no messages were piled up in the queues or no mess, no channels were in doubt state. So it will then it will stop all the queue managers on the server, and it will take the binary. Suppose let's say we'll set up one property file, and the property file what it will do is it will take the uh, MQ migration binary files from the property file 
and it will stop the queue managers and it it will uh, stop uh, it will wait till the queue manager is stopped uh, cleanly and then it will migrate the existing version to the latest version and after that if required we'll do an mq fix pack installation on the top of the mq base pack installation and the once it is completely or once it is successfully migrated to the latest version then we will start all the queue managers and post migration so whenever we do the migration for our customers we'll provide the scripts for them so that whenever they want to do the migration in future they can easily can do they can just uh, do a run of the script so that the scripts will do all the jobs for them only thing they have to do is they have to go and change the binary file path where they are going to unpack their uh, software uh, binaries they have to make sure that they give the correct path in the property file so that the script will go there and it will take those binaries from there and it will do the uh, migration for them so uh, so we have created some nice uh, uh, shell scripts for the uh, daily automation so the person who has a very limited or who has uh, i mean who are beginners for mq can use these scripts and they can easily do the mq day to day activities so this is going to be a live demo so i'm i'm showing that on one of our linux server okay so uh, this is the uh, menu that we have created for the mq so uh, we can and this is all customizable and this menu can be added or this menu can be uh, i mean some of the uh, uh, tasks can be removed from the menu as per your requirements it is all uh, as per your requirements suppose let's say you want to uh, migrate uh, your uh, uh, version to the next version you can you can add your migration scripts here we can add those as well let's suppose let's say if you want to do a dr setup where you do uh, the similar your head office uh, mq as a part of your dr so what you can do is you can do a save queue manager and you can move those save queue managers to the dr server where we can set up the scripts for you so the save queue manager what it will do is it will uh, you just need to create the queue manager or we can provide the scripts as well for creating the queue manager and it will take the save queue manager and it will create so these these are all like as per your requirements we can customize the scripts i'm going to show like uh, the hamq health check scripts that i am showing in the demo so this is the one hamq health so we have like three queue managers configured on the server like these are the three so i'm going to uh, take uh, display the mq health check for one of the queue managers so you have to select the queue managers and you have to uh, just paste it here and and you have to press enter so what it is showing here is the complete mq health check at, at one shot so you don't require to go to each and every queue manager and you don't require to give the commands there to display the mq health check it it is very user friendly where by seeing this you can see that the queue manager name and this is the version of the queue manager and the status is running and the logging type is circular and this is part of the cluster and SSL is not configured. So it gives a complete information about the queue manager and the, if it is a part of the cluster and it will just give the cluster name, the source is a cluster name and this is the partial repository then this is not the full repository. And you can see the, the different types of services that we required for MQ to be up and running all the time. That is the listener, channel initiator, and cluster repository and command server. If you see, this, everything is running. And if you the listener, we have only one instance running. We can have multiple instance. Suppose if you have multiple instance of listener, then it will show the all the instance of listener. And the red letter queue, the defined for the queue manager, no red letter queue. Suppose let's say because the red letter queue is the a uh, crucial thing that we have to define for every queue manager and if it suppose let's see if the red letter queue uh, current depth is more than one then it will display the the current depth of that queue that if it is more than one it will show in the red alert and right now if you see here the server connection count is 100 and there is no active channel of server connection and this is the uh, channel name and which is in retrying state and this is the remote host okay and if you see here is that uh, this one is trying to ping the channel and uh, when it ping the channel it's showing that the remote host is not available that means 
it is actually telling the status as well as it is doing one time ping and if, if from seeing this error you can understand that the remote server is not available and you can quickly go and uh, inform the uh, teams or if you have an access to that queue manager as well you can just go and check what happened to the, what is the health check of that or else you can restart it okay and if you see this sender channel is in stopped state and ping west wing so the ping is there but it is in stopped state and the below XMAT uh, because the below transmission queue there is one transmission queue called save underscore dev and the max depth is two because this this channel is connecting to the save and which is in stop state the so current depth is two and then there is no local queue suppose let's say if the local queue the threshold limit is more than 80 percent of its max depth then it will display the uh, like what are the queues that are 80 percent full so there is no queues which are 80 percent full, no local queues and last fdc was generated on June 7th at 2020, 21.20, so at 9.20 p.m. So this is the one which actually gives the, regarding the FDCs. So it also gives a file system information, like uh, MQ file system, like where MQ, MQ managers, like how much is the file system space utilized and what is the root directory space utilized. So this is, gives a complete health check and and what we can do is suppose let's say you don't have a monitoring tool and if you want to set up your uh, basic monitoring on the queue manager you can run this uh, mq health check on your uh, con job you can set up your con job so that your con job will run for every one hour it, it will run for 15 20 minutes so you can set up the time you like and you can run it so if you set up for every one hour so it will run for every one hour and whenever there is an alert we can configure the uh, email alerting system in the script where suppose let's say if the channel is down it will immediately send an email send a notification to the person uh, who is responsible for the mq administration so this this about the mq health check trips so when when you again press enter so it will just go to the so if you want to stop a queue manager, if you want to start a queue manager, if you want to recycle, everything can be done. So well, let's say if I want to stop a queue manager from here, and if I'm if I'm trying to do a stop a queue manager of this. So it shows that, so let's say because this queue manager is not running, uh, that is because it it's also does the, uh, suppose let's say if I'm very new and just know like I have to stop a queue manager, and if, you, if there is any, uh, operation team where they have to uh, stop the queue manager uh, for uh, any any of the server in the middle of a night so they don't need to call the uh, mq administrator they simply if you have the scripts if they know the queue manager and if they have the downtime for the queue manager and if they have the change in place they can simply execute the scripts and they can run it yeah so that this is mq automation scripts that we have created and we can see that this queue manager is done and and i'm giving the option three to start this queue manager. So this queue manager is started now. In the same way, we can we can actually uh, do a lot of things uh, uh, using these things. Uh, suppose let's say uh, because the most uh, important thing that we will get a safe queue manager. Suppose let's say uh, if you don't have the uh, weekly backup or uh, monthly backup of the queue manager, you can you can use a safe queue manager. You can set up a con job that runs every week on your production uh, uh, MQ, where it will simply uh, take the uh, queue manager backup of the server. So let's say I'm, I'm taking the backup of this queue manager. So it will check whether this command server running on this uh, queue manager or not. And from here, we can see that the command server OK for the queue manager. So, so it took the uh, objects backup, and the objects backup were got saved here. And it took the object authorities like whatever the permission that we have for the queues that it took the authorization backup as well as it took the backup of qm.ina file and mqs.ina file and it saved in this location. So this, this is a very user friendly uh, MQ automation scripts where you can uh, use it on your day day to day activities. Okay, as I said earlier, this is more customizable and we can customize as per your requirement. Suppose let's say I want to display the MQ logs for my uh, queue manager. 
so i can i can go and i can do this so it says like which queue manager logs you want to display whether you want to display your queue manager error logs or you want to display your queue manager fdc logs so i want to go with the first option i'm just clicking one so that it will just display the complete logs yeah suppose let's say if you want to only see the last uh, <clears throat> like five uh, last uh, five to six lines of the logs then we can customize the script as for your requirement as of now it is displaying the last log of the queue manager and if you want to exit you can just hit queue and this, this is this is the mq automation scripts and now i'm moving uh, uh, to the next one this is mq monitor pro and this is one of our monitoring tool that in-house monitoring tool that we have developed and we have our presenter for that uh, mr alok so i'm i'm handing over to alok to do this uh, demo i'm passing uh, this Want to unlock? Uh, yeah. Thanks, Rani. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, shall I? Uh, so, like, uh, uh, so what we uh, offer here is uh, uh, for uh, Monitor Pro. Uh, so, what we do? So, it's uh, actually a basic idea behind developing the Monitor Pro was that we had to monitor uh, the business transactions which were pertaining through different middlewares. So, but we we are not limited to business transactions. We also help you to monitor the system metrics of the particular NQ. Uh, so what we offer here is, so uh, we offer the queue, the queue manager status monitoring, the queue status monitoring, the channel status monitoring, the listener status monitoring, and the queue depth, uh, and the monitor monitoring the dead letter queue. So this is a dashboard, uh, which, uh, which is like uh, the monitor pro dashboard, which we give, uh, just an overview of it. And uh, so uh, we have done a case study of uh, one of our e-commerce client. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through, guys, uh, through the what, what actually was the issue uh, with the e-commerce uh, client which we had. So uh, the, we, they had a middleware solution architect guy, so like who was telling that they had uh, tons of transactions were happening uh, through their, yeah. So, uh, so the so the middleware solution architect, the guy, he told like the challenges which they were facing. So the so a lot of transactions were happening, but uh, uh, I mean they were getting failed, and that too like because of the queue manager was not uh, running properly. I mean due to some uh, issues, it was getting it was not in the active state. So it, this was causing the transaction to fail. Uh, apart from that, like uh, Shini told, the cluster queue managers. So the cluster queue managers, like uh, many queue managers, running uh, side by side for different processes. So they were uh, showing some suspended status, and again, it's a, it's a uh, failure. When the customers were coming to their website and when they were ordering for any product, then actually what happened was uh, it was failing. The order failed. So obviously the the cost it was costing a lot to the company because uh, the customer was was not coming back to the uh, website uh, again. So the same thing was like uh, the another challenges were like uh, the queues. So some uh, some queues were constantly receiving the messages, but the rest of the queues were not receiving uh, the messages. So it was causing them to like uh, 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 like in a stop stage. So that uh, the dead letter queue. So basically, uh, the dead letter queue was getting piled up because the queues, uh, uh, the messages which were coming to the uh, to the destination queues, they were not being sent. So what happened? The dead letter queue was getting piled up. And along with that, the current depth and the IP prox and OP prox, uh, I mean, these were also causing a lot of issues along with the channels and listeners. So what we offer here is we, uh, we monitor the whole system metrics of it, of the MQ, and along with that, we give the alerts too. So the solution which we gave, like, uh, so like I said, like we, we monitor the queue manager, the status, the, the queues, the channels, and the listener status along with the statistics and with the alerts. So what benefits do you get from the Monitor Pro? So the benefits that you'll get is you, you it's uh, the installation part is very, very easy. So you get a beats uh, which, uh, which will ship the data, your MQ uh, data to Monitor Pro, uh, and then and everything is done by us. And uh, like, uh, uh, like I said, uh, the UI is very user friendly and it's very customizable. Uh, it, it, uh, fri within a fraction of seconds, the use case, whichever you have, it will be ready for you. So, and actually we give the role based access. So like if you want to give the admin or the view to that particular user, you can have that also. And um, like I said, the alerts is the main criteria and like you can have the thresholds levels also. So it will be a boon for your uh, company. 
so uh, so going, going to the demo part so uh, so this is the uh, the demo i mean the, the main the main uh, page where you land up while you, you go through the module pro so like i said uh, the apart from the business transactions so uh, from which happens through different middlewares we also give uh, api connect data power iib uh, along with mq so uh, like uh, I'll, I'll go through the mq so on the on this screen like you can see um, we have queue manager so the the queue manager status uh, whether it's running or not so we have mapped it to the particular that 40 states that is the running stage and you can see like uh, uh, that the current time which uh, which uh, the last time uh, at which the queue manager was running apart from that like we also gave like the what, what is the particular queues that are running on this particular queue manager and what are the channels and listeners on this particular queue manager and apart from that like uh, like i said and the queue manager statuses. So uh, whether it's in a running stage or whether it's a stop stage, so we have generated the alerts on it. So you can see the green thing here. So it will go red if uh, the, the queue manager goes in the stop stage. So that's how it works. And like I said, the dead letter queue, which is the most important thing to be monitored. So the dead letter queue, what happens is if you if you can uh, if you set the alerts, the threshold levels, then actually what will happen is yeah, if the, the threshold level gets increased up or piled up, so you'll be uh, it will be throwing alert, and the, the heart will be broken. It will be thrown to red, and you'll be getting the alert. So going to the next dashboard. So uh, this is the queue manager dashboard. So what we give next is the queue dashboard. So this is the queues dashboard. So uh, the the particular queue manager and the current depth of the queue. So you can uh, we can have the alerts on this particular. Uh, the the current depth of the queue so like uh, with the with the thresholds actually that's the most important thing so with like if, if the current depth of the queue gets uh, increased uh, to up to up to a particular threshold level due to the messages then we can show the alerts along with the stats which we show up here so the ip prox and op prox so the ip prox and op prox like you, like you guys might be knowing that uh, the ip prox is a uh, the, the the applications which listen to the particular queue and OB process the applications which are right to the particular queue so if those applications it goes down then it it can cause a serious uh, issue in your uh, modules and it will cause like i mean a serious thing uh, happening to the modules which you have deployed so yeah we offer alerts on these all the scenarios apart from that coming to the channels part so the, the same thing goes with the channel. So, so the channel has a particular status. So it's running on the stop stage. Along with the heavy have we provide a lot of statistics. Like you can see here, the current messages, the buffer received and sent, along with the bytes and the status code. The status code corresponds to the status that is running stage. The last thing which we offer is the listeners. So the listeners dashboard, which you see here, is like uh, the same thing, the status of the particular listener. And uh, uh, so what the start date, the start time of it, and what is the pre-ID, the processor ID for this particular listener, along with it, we offer uh, uh, on, the, on, on which thing you want to have an alert, we can do that, along with the statuses. Uh, so that's all from my side. Thanks everyone for participating in today's webinar and you have a great day. Thank you, bye.